Good morning, everybody. My name is my name is Cole Hoffman, and I'm a 2017 confirmant. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, we give thanks on this wonderful Confirmation Sunday that we can all be here healthy and safe. We ask that of your hand of blessing during today's service. We ask that you may guide us on the rest of our path as current and new members of the Northfield Congregational Church. We give thanks for helping us confirmants and once past grow into faithful members of the church. Amen. <laughs> Hi, I'm Natalie Schrader, a 2017 confirmand. Please join with me in the call to worship. Gracious God, come and confirm us in the truth that Christ makes known. We have faith and understanding through your helping gifts alone. Use our hands and guide our feet to do your work in this world. Be with us as we profess our faith in you. Field. Good morning. My name is Amelia Quist and I am a 2017 confirmand. Let, let us pray. God of all creation, we come before you today to give you honor and praise. You are the source of all that is good. You are the source of all of our blessings. We would like to thank our amazing parents for all of their support during our confirmation. We would also like to thank the Northfield community for helping us in our journey to be confirmed, especially Reverend Kelly and Reverend Bernard for teaching us to be good Christians. Thank you for helping us to accomplish our work and our goals this day. We would like to ask for blessings for Emmanuel, St. Francis, and Temple Israel. With the prayer you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I am Tyler Bauer, a 2017 confirmand. As a Christian, I have always believed that the church should be a place of protection during the times of good and, most importantly, during times of bad. I believe that a church should not only be a place you are told to go to by a parent, but a place 
that you want to go to because it's a place of joy and it's a place of acceptance and it's a place of protection. My mom has always showed me this because every day of every week she comes here with my grandparents and she walks around just to bask in the glow that is this church and she goes and visits visits lost family members but it's also good because she likes to surround herself in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to me is it's kind of hard to explain. It's something you can't describe in mere words but it empowers you, it makes you happy, but it also can just show you that you're not alone even when it sometimes feels like you are. I believe that God is kind of like someone who wants you to become the best version of yourself and that throughout life he's going to put you through struggles, but he's only putting you through those struggles so that someday you'll become the best version of yourself. I believe that Christ is someone who gives a kinder face to God. He's someone that humanity can connect to on a more personal level because he himself has a human face. Um, as a Christian, I believe that we're, we need to go through all these struggles in order to grow, but it's also there so that we can learn to be kinder to every man, that we can accept all, and that we can become what God needs us to become and really reconnect with him on an emotional and spiritual level. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elise Russell, a 2017 Conferman. I believe that everything happens for a reason, and God is the one who creates these reasons. He wants us to learn from both our mistakes and our achievements. I think of God as a GPS who mapped out each and every one of our lives and is up to us to decide whether we want to follow him or choose a different route. I have learned that if you ever get off track, God is always there to tell us, take a U-turn or use the exit up ahead as a, way to tell, as a way to help us through the traffic present in all of our lives. In addition, making mistakes and taking the wrong turn is at some point inevitable in every human's life. The way in which our lives turn out, I believe, is a direct reflection of ourselves and our response to the faith-driven obstacles that lie ahead of us. Much like the sign saying, construction in two miles, that gives people the ability to slow down and be a little more careful for what's coming up in the future. When ignoring these signs, there is no choice but to deal with a consequence, whether it be through stress, loss, speeding tickets. These signs are not anything a faithful Christian, let alone, let alone a driver, should ignore. There are some situations, however, where you may not have seen any signs leaving you completely lost, contemplating life and whether God truly knows best. This is where those nice locals who you happen to see on the side of the road come into play. Whenever my family and I are lost and our GPS doesn't seem to work, which is very often, <laughs> or make any sense, those locals always know how to guide us onto the right path, allowing our GPS to kick in for the rest of the ride. These lovely people are what I like to think of as our priests and pastors. When God no longer makes sense to us, our priests and pastors always know how to interpret God's words, even when not much is being said. The clergy helps to show us how having faith in God not only leads us to our intended destination, but helps to navigate us through the rocky roads of life. It may seem crazy that, the, it may seem crazy that they're able to do this, but people of theology were once beginners just like the rest of us. They didn't just get into a car and learn to drive around town on their own. They took driver's ed beforehand, or in a more spiritual sense, they learned how to interpret, interpret the Bible prior to preaching. I believe that the Bible contains God's basic lessons through stories, stories that were meant to be interpret, interpreted and shared like many spiritual leaders do. But in order to take driver's ed, one must need a car, a driving force which moves as a response to the GPS's direction. This driving force is similar to the Son of God, Jesus. He who provided humanity with forgiveness through self-sacrifice, all thanks to the guidance of God. And as everyone knows, no car is complete without a stereo. A car stereo signifies to me the sweet sound of a choir at church, singing to the congregation as everyone picks up separate bits and pieces that truly speak to them on their own unique pit stops of life. Lastly, with church gospels, there must be a church involved. 
I think of the church as the sun and the moon. I say this because no matter how far you may drive or what time of day it is, the sun and the moon always seem to stay right beside you. Much like a church, no matter where you move or what phase of, what phase of life you're in, the church will always support you on your journey to life's destination. Hi, I'm Morgan Schramm, and I'm a seven, I'm 2017 Confirmad. I believe in life, everything happens for a reason. I believe people walk into your life to teach us purpose. However, some purposes could be a lot more sore than others. Throughout life, one goes through many obstacles, some common and some not as typical. For me, getting out of bed in the morning to see my teachers at 7.45 would definitely count as an obstacle, but most in life are greater than that. People need people whether you call yourself a people person or not. It's laced in our blood. We rely for each other for, to survive and for resources. It, stays, it states in the Bible that whether two or three people are gathered in God's name, God is present there as well. People need friendship and a companionship or even a simple smile to wake up to in the morning to get out of their beds. We need a relationship to help us find purpose and to survive. Recently, a speaker came to Weston High School to talk about the importance of high school in a, in a, the, the, the importance of kindness in a high school. He shared that he thinks finding kindness in a high school could be difficult, but I also agree. He told us a story of a man who wanted to end his life due to chronic depression. This man believed he had absolutely nothing to live for and had planned to live to, to, to and he planned to walk from his apartment right off the Tappan Zee Bridge. However, this man had a hitch in his plan. If just one person acknowledged him or just smiled at him, he would go home. Sadly, this man died. This made me think and wonder if this man ever talked to God, and if he did, it could have saved him, which I truly believed. It might have given him some peace to know that God loves him and unconditionally will. I've come to believe that something as, as simple as a smile could change someone's whole life. It could, change, it could save someone's loved one. Since the speaker came to Weston High School and talked to us about kindness and its purpose, it came my purpose too. Just to make one, people, one person feel wanted would be a success to me. I realized that depression could just happen because of biology, but I've also learned that sharing God's love and faith is something to be taught. This church has also taught me so much. Norfield has taught me the loyalty in God and faith, but not only that, but the loyalty and faith that the, this community shares. Confirmation has taught me that this church has always been a safe haven for everyone, regardless on your background, ethnicity, religion, or no matter purpose of your life has. It's quoted, accept one another than just as Christ accepted you. In order to bring praise to God, we just take care and remember that Christ sees us at our best as well as our very worst and still com accepts us as completely as we are. When we are free from judgment, how can we be quick to judge others? If we choose to love and accept one another in our own imperfections, we echo what Jesus has said for us, and we God we praise. Thank you. Hello again. As I come closer to my confirmation, I've started to think about my faith and what I believe in. I see things in a more theistic view. I believe in evolution and science, but I also believe that all of those things had to start somewhere, and God was the one who started it. I imagine God is always around us and always watching with a close eye. I believe that even if people don't believe in God, that he loves them nonetheless. Even though the Bible said that God created us based on himself, I imagine not God only as human, but also as an animal, plant, or spirit. I am not exactly sure what everyday things God does for us, but I like to think that God has a plan for us. I believe that Jesus is in the human form of God put on earth as a teacher to show us how we should act and believe in God. Even though Jesus has died, I believe that there is still a spiritual form living in all of us today. Although I'm unsure if all the stories in the Bible are true, I do believe that part of the Bible is a collection of Jesus' acts on earth and how he affected us humans. The other parts of the Bible are about how God made his presence felt and how he helps us humans get through our struggles. Northfield Church is very important to my family and me. It is not only a place of worship, but a place of community, love, and hope. I have grown up being involved at Northfield and having a relationship with everybody in it. I hope that all the qualities of Northfield are present in all churches around the world. The church is a place for us to connect with God and to share experiences as Christians. I think that every church has its own Bible, full of its stories and experiences. Equality is critical in our world today because I think if everyone is treated equally, 
No matter their looks, personality, beliefs, sexuality, and gender, we can all work together to better further our world. I believe, this is, I believe that equality is one of God's missions for humanity. If everyone is treated equally and allowed to express themselves, it will change our world exponentially. This whole year of confirmation helped me better to better understand Christianity and the Bible and the history of workings of our church. I feel more part of the church after this experience. Thank you. I'm Erin Dillon and I'm a 2017 confirmand and I'm gonna be singing Last of the Low Country.
Jordan River and every baptism that we do here. Let us pray over the waters of baptism. Loving God, be with us now as we welcome these two wonderful young people into the faith and family of Jesus Christ, now and forever. Bless this water as it touches them so they might have strength their whole life to walk with you. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Now we pause to touch the feet of our candidates. Pray that God will always be a lamp to your feet and a light to every path you take. We touch your hands. We pray that you might find the work God has ordained for you. We touch your ears. We pray that you might hear God's word through your life. We touch your eyes. We pray that you might see God's beauty in all of creation. We touch your mouth. Pray that you might speak God's word to a world so in need of hearing that word. We touch your heads. Pray that your mind will be open to discover all there is in life and seek ways to make our world better. And we touch your heart. Pray that every day you live, you will love without abandon. And now in obedience to the head of the church. Mary, Blue, Ferdinand, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And Thomas, Christian story, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Would you join me in our congregation of welcome? We receive Thomas and Mary as the new creations in Christ. We offer our understanding and support for his experience life. We enfold them in our love. We seek together to grow in wisdom and stature and in the favor of God and all the people. My brothers and sisters, would you welcome our new background? It turns into the chrysalis. It goes inside this chrysalis. 
and inside the chrysalis, it's hard at work getting ready for its next transformation into a butterfly, as we all know. When it's inside the chrysalis, it hangs from the milkweed like this. And it sits inside hard at work for two to four weeks before it can turn into the butterfly. Then from this tight chrysalis, a big, beautiful butterfly emerges, tighter than ever. <laughs> Similar to the way um, Jesus moved the giant stone that sealed the tomb. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for letting us remember Jesus' sacrifice even after Easter Sunday and finding new, creative, and awesome ways to do so like the Bible. Amen. And friends, our contramans have a butterfly for you guys to take home and put into your own garden. These are sharks' heads, so let's be gentle with each other. You can come and see our friends to get them. And now I'd like to invite our Tom Command people, Myla Adams Bauer, Lucas Lipsio Casas, Aaron and Dylan, Harry Blue Ferdinand, Caitlin Lydia Foster, Mason Christian Hastings, Cole Thomas Hoffman, Kayla Conjur Kendall, Catherine Christopher and Bernal, Marina Joan Newell, Amelia Rose Quist, Kelly Ann Roseman, Elise Ann Russell, Morgan Elizabeth Schramm, Adam Paulus Trader, Thomas Christian Story, and Mila and Alicia White. I'd also like to invite any 2016 compromands that are here to come and stand in the aisles for a special blessing during this time as well. words of Jesus, I am the vine, you are the branches. Anyone who abides in me and I in that person is the one who bears much fruit. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Tyler, Lucas, Aaron, Perry, Kat, Mason, Cole, Mika, Kate, Marina, Emmy, Kep, Ellie, Kelly, Elise, Morgan, Natalie, Tom, and Mila. Do you wish to give your adult affirmation to your participation in the journey of faith in the family of Jesus Christ? On your journey, will you be faithful to God and renounce the powers of evil? If so, say, I will. I will. Do you understand the love of God shown in Jesus Christ to be a faithful witness of the love of the Creator? Do you, you I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? You promise according to the grace given you to grow in the Christian faith, to be a faithful member of Northfield, furthering Christ's mission in the world. So answer, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. And do you promise to participate in the life and mission of Northfield Church, attending worship and enlisting in the work of this church as it serves this community and the world? If so, please answer, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. We give thanks for every step in your life's journey that brings you to this decision today, that the power of God's Spirit rests upon you, as you affirm your desire to be confirmed as full members of the Northfield Congregational Church. Do you, the members of the 2017 Confirmation Class, promise to be faithful members of the Northfield Church family, giving of yourself in every way to fulfill your calling as a follower of Christ? <laughs> I promise to care for and support these new members as they grow in their relationship with God and this church family. We do. Let us, the members of Northfield Congregational Church, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We promise you our continuing friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge let us all unite within the tradition of this church by reading together the covenant of Northfield Congregational Church. 
We promise to live at Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we take as our rule of life the words, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. We take this church to be our church, and ever mindful of our fellow members, we promise to walk with them in faithfulness and in love. candidates to join me in a prayer of commitment. Creator of all, it is my desire to trust your faithful love of all things. Inspired by the love of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, the all of Scripture, and the care of this community, help me be a faithful witness to your love in all I say and do. Amen. Friends, confirmation recalls when the Holy Spirit came down at Pentecost and touched each, each disciple. We have seven 2017 confirmants and a group of the 2016 confirmants here. I was not able to attend last year's confirmation service because my parents' accident was two days before. But I want to just say that this is a faithful witness. This is why we do what we do. And this is God's love demonstrated in human form. So I'd like to invite you all to extend your arms out as we confirm these young people into full life and membership of Christ's Holy Church. Almighty oh God. Grant these your children love for others, joy and perseverance, peace and disagreement, patience and suffering, kindness toward all people, goodness in evil times, faithfulness in temptation, gentleness in the face of opposition, and self-control in all things, thereby strengthening them for their ministry in the world. Help them to live not for themselves, but for you. Congratulating our friendship. All right. I'm uh, Tom Story, a 2017 Compromise. I'm Kelly Roseman, a 2017 Compromise. And I'm Mika Kendall, a 2017 Compromise. Yeah. That same day, two other disciples are traveling seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. As they walk along, they talk about all that has transpired during recent days. While they're talking, Jesus catches up to them and begins walking with them. But for some reason, they don't recognize him. What are you talking about as you walk along this road? They stop walking and just stand there, looking sad. One of them, Cleopas, stands up. You must be the only visitor in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about what's been going on over the last few days. What are you talking about? It's all about the man named Jesus of Nazareth. He was a mighty prophet who did amazing miracles and preached powerful messages in the sight of God and everyone around. Our chief priests and authorities handed him over to be executed, crucified in fact. We had been hoping that he was the one, you know, the one who would liberate all Israel. On top of all of this, just today, the third day after the execution, some woman in our group went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't see his body anywhere. They came back and told us they did something. A vision, they did see something a vision of heavenly messengers, and these messengers said that Jesus was alive. Some people in our group went to the tomb to check it out, and just as the woman had said, it was empty, but they didn't see Jesus. Come on, men, why are you being so foolish? Why are your hearts so sluggish when it comes to believing what the prophets have been saying all along? Didn't it have to be this way? Didn't the anointed one have to experience these sufferings in order to come into his glory? Then he begins with Moses and continues, prophet by prophet, explaining the meaning of the Hebrew scriptures, showing how they were talking about the very things that had happened to Jesus. About this time, they are nearing their destination. Jesus keeps walking ahead as if he has no plans to stop there, but they convince him to join them. Please be our guest. It's getting late, and soon it will be too dark to walk. So he accompanies them to their home. When they sit down at the table for dinner, he takes the bread in his hands, he gives thanks for it, and then he breaks the bread and hands it to them. At that instant, their eyes are suddenly opened, so they, don't rec or so they do recognize him, and he instantly vanishes, just disappears before their eyes. Amazing. Weren't our hearts on fire within us while he was talking to us on the road? Didn't you feel it all coming clear as he explained the meaning of the Hebrew scriptures? So they get up immediately and rush back to Jerusalem, where they find the eleven gathered there, plus a number of others. Before they can tell their stories, the others have their own story to tell. The Lord has risen indeed. It's true. He appeared to Simon. 
Then the two men report to their own, they report their own experience, their conversation along the road, their moment of realization and recognition as he broke the bread. At that very instant, as they're still telling their story, Jesus is there, standing among them. You have peace. They're startled and terrified. They think they're seeing a ghost. Why are you upset? Why are your hearts churning with questions? Look, look at my hands and my feet. See that it's me. Come on, touch me. See for yourselves. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you can see that I have. Then he shows them his hands and his feet. Now their fear gives way to joy, but it seems too good to be true, and they're still unsure. I've been telling you this all along, that everything written about me in the Hebrew scriptures must be fulfilled. Everything from the law of Moses to the prophets of the Psalms. Then he opens their minds so that he can comprehend the meaning of the Hebrew scriptures. This is what the scriptures said, that, they, that the promised anointed one should suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, that in his name a radical change of thought and life should be preached, and that in his name the forgiveness of sins should be preached, beginning in Jerusalem and extending to all nations. You have witnessed the fulfillment of these things. So I am sending my Father's promise to you. Stay in the city until you receive it, until power from heaven comes upon you. Then he leads them out to Bethany. He lifts up his hands and blesses them, and at that moment, with his hands raised in blessing, he leaves them and is carried up into heaven. They worship him, and they return to Jerusalem, filled with intense joy, and they return again and again to the temple to celebrate God. Aren't these young people amazing? <laughs> Let's give them another hand. The question that always accompanies the end of anything is what happens now? And we ask the what happens now question because every ending creates new beginnings. And the same can be said of Confirmation Sunday, which by the way is one of the most important events in the life of the church Easter, Christmas, and here at Northfield Gospel Sunday are great moments in the life of the church, but Confirmation Sunday rivals them all. And like other endings, Confirmation Sunday brings with it the what happens now question. There's a church sign that says, some questions can't be answered by Google. Do you ever wonder why we even ask questions? Well, I Googled that question, and here is Google's response. Questions are an indication that a person is willing to learn and explore and discover the unknown. And questions demonstrate one's openness to finding out what they don't know. So questions are a good thing. And questions about our faith are an even better thing. And our text on this Confirmation Sunday from Luke's Gospel about two disciples on the road to Emmaus is chock full of questions from beginning to end. Jesus asks these two disciples, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along the way? And the disciples ask, are you the only one who does not know these things that have taken place in Jerusalem? And Jesus asks, what things? Didn't you know it was necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And the disciples ask, didn't our hearts burn while he was talking and opening the scriptures to us? This road to Emmaus story, it is chock full of questions from beginning to end. And then there are the questions that the story raises. Who are these two disciples? And why don't they recognize Jesus? Does Jesus behave differently now that he has risen from the dead? Was Jesus no longer bruised from his Good Friday beating? Why did Jesus disappear? Where did Jesus disappear to? From beginning to end, the story of these two disciples on this journey to Emmaus is chock full of questions and raises other questions. And that's okay. Because questions demonstrate our willingness to learn, explore, and discover the unknown. And it shows an openness to finding out what one is uncertain about. And questions are part of the faith journey and speaks to what it means to be a people of faith, to be Christians. And that brings us to our 2017 Confirmands this morning. Because Confirmands come to the Confirmation journey with questions. Lots of questions. And what we want them to know as they begin their journey in confirming their faith is that it's okay to ask questions. They are hearing these questions because questions about our faith and why we have a faith and how to live out our faith are all part of the faith journey. And of course there are and will always be questions about our faith and about what we believe and questions that will go unanswered like, will I be rewarded if I'm good? 
Will I be punished if I'm bad? Does prayer change anything? Why doesn't everyone get everything that they pray for? If God created the universe, who created God? And did Jesus literally walk on water? Did Jesus really die and then rise from the dead? Well, well, we, we wish, wish we, we could, could say to our 2017 confirmands that we have all the answers to all of their questions, questions but, but we, we don't. don't. <laughs> and that's okay, because we hope that you are do what you are doing today is confirming your commitment to continue seeking answers to your questions about your faith. Because this morning's confirmation celebration is not the end of your faith journey, but, but the, the beginning, beginning of, of what, what we hope and pray is your lifelong journey to faith. faith. To discover to what God, God, the Bible, Bible Jesus, Jesus, and the church, and the church means, means to you. you. Amen. Hi, I'm Natalie Schrader, a 2017 Copperman, and I'm going to be playing Sarah Van by Bohm. Let us pray. 
We offer our gifts to God, who claims us as children, who names us beloved, who celebrates our presence. We offer our gifts to a loving God. Thanks to be God. Amen. Amen. We want to prepare us body, mind, and spirit to receive your body and your blood. We ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. <clears throat> well, I received from the Lord what I delivered to you this day, and on the night in which it was betrayed, after he had given thanks, he took the bread and broke it. He said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and after giving thanks, he said, This is my blood poured out for you. As often as you drink of this, you do proclaim my resurrection until I come again. Our 2017 compliments are going to come forward and receive their communion first. <laughs> 